Hi, this is Shep Altrilor, publisher of Time Sharing Today. Welcome to this broadcast of Time Sharing Today Radio, featuring news and views of owners and industry professionals. Today we are being joined by Sherry Weeks Rivera, Vice President of Sales and Business Development for Grand Pacific Resorts Management based in Carlsbad, California. We'll be taking a close look at the key role the Timeshare Resorts Owner Services Department plays in assuring that owners get the maximum value out of their investment in their timeshares and why owner services should be an owner's first point of contact whenever questions or issues arise. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Shep. I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad that you had the time to uh, spend with us today. Take a few minutes. Tell our listeners about your background in the timeshare industry. Oh, I would love to. I am actually going on my 28th year with Grand Pacific Resort Management. When I say that out loud, I still can't believe it. 28 years doesn't seem possible. I think I must have started when I was about 12. But, you know, all kidding aside... I uh, really enjoy this industry. I started out at the Carlsbad Inn front desk, and, you know, I knew right away as soon as I started there that this was the place for me. I was very lucky to have started with Grand Pacific, uh, you know, when they were a very young company. So I really grew up with the company. Uh, I was empowered to let my entrepreneurial spirit soar, per se, and being that we were such a young company, I had the ability to help develop a lot of the programs that focused on the overall owner satisfaction in our in our industry. So uh, some of the areas that I you know find to be appealing and I'm most proud of is uh, developing our owner services department, which for a lot of resorts, it's you know such a core element of the success of it, of many resorts. So you were there right in the heyday of the, uh, the emergence of the legacy resort aspects of the timeshare industry. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. You know, the mid '80s is when things were really taking off, and but really exciting. Was the headquarters always in Carlsbad? Yes, yeah. We've always been located in Carlsbad. We really, um, honestly, started out out of the Carlsbad Inn itself. That's where our offices were. And, you know, one thing about Grand Pacific, they grew out of what was originally Winter Circle Resort, and, uh, which was Jim Watkins, who is phenomenal in his vision and development. We started out of the Carlsbad Inn, and, you know, as we quickly grew, we built one resort at a time and have consistently done that since the 80s. We, you know, grew a little bit and would move into another office, and we're about, oh gosh, I think about 15 years ago, they finally built their own office building because we were big enough at that point that, you know, we really needed to centralize things. Now, how many resorts does Grand Pacific Resorts manage? Well, we currently manage 20 properties and two hotels. Uh, the resorts are located, you know, it's primarily Southern California where we started um, from Coronado. We have some a resort in Del Mar, several resorts in Carlsbad one in Oceanside, we have one in San Clemente, Arnold, California, Napa, Indio. We have a few in Lake Tahoe, and I'm proud to say we just started managing our third resort in Lake Tahoe, the Tahoe Beach and Ski Resort, which we started January 1st of this year, and we're really proud uh, you know, to be partnering with that board. It's uh, just such a phenomenal resort. We also have a couple resorts in Canada, one in Panorama, British Columbia, another one in Canmore, Alberta, and then uh, we have a few resorts in Princeville, Hawaii, which, you know, we absolutely love. You're a diversified company. Tell us a little bit about the services that are offered by uh, Grand Pacific. We are a full-service management company. I think, um, you know, I, I find myself, I've talked about this a lot of times with different boards, and we take a different approach. And I think part of that approach comes from the standpoint that we were a developer first, and we're privately held, which is really important because it, it does make a difference in your ability to customize your approach with each property. For decades, we've been focused on our owners creating you know, vacation ownership experiences that they want to hang on to, that, that they look forward to every year. We're a very well-established family of um, owners and associates uh, that take a great deal of pride in that whole vacation ownership product. We uh, we focused from the very beginning on the development of services and products that give the owners what they think they're going to get. They use what they purchased. And, you know, really at the end of the day, that's the core of what's going to make you successful. The other thing that I think makes us a little different and what I find to be, you know, is an appealing asset um, when I talk with board members and owners is that when we approach management, you know, it's not a cookie cutter approach. We try to look at the unique and distinctive assets of each property and, you know, create that management 
product around that. It's not a cookie cutter approach where you do, you know, you have to have your best practices and that sort of thing, which I think are really important. And we really like to keep the consistency of service and, um, you know, your housekeeping, your preventative maintenance, all of that kind of stuff is very, you know, you, know, you, you want to focus on best practices and be very consistent. But when it comes to the experience at the property, we really like to bring out that boutique experience at each resort. And it's, it's very different. With, you know, if you go to Hawaii, you go to Lake Tahoe, you go to Southern California, each resort has its own personality. And, you know, the thing that I found really, it's really interesting and gives me a lot of passion for the product is when I hear the board members talk about their resorts. And, you know, every board member says the same thing. Our resort's different. And this is why. This is what we're about. And these boards have so much passion, and the owners have so much passion about their property and the experiences that and the memories they have there. So we really just try to come in and, and enhance that and bring the best of each of those properties and their unique feels out so you know they have their own unique personality. It's not only that the uh, resorts are in different geographical areas and there's a different personality, but there's also different culture that resides within a resort. You see that reflected, and that's part of um, what this conversation is all about today, is at some point owners will cross paths in one way or another with the resort's owner services department. And I think we don't dwell enough on that aspect of what is a very important a part or function within the resort. So. Uh, why don't you tell our listeners uh, what you see as the uh, primary function of a timeshare resort's owner services department? Oh, I would love to. You know, the owner services has really evolved over the years. You know, I was fortunate to, to have worked with the team to develop the owner services department here at Grand Pacific Resorts. And when I look at where we started, um, you know, some of the things are the same. You, you know, we rolled out Vacation Ownership 101 and things like that to help owners understand what they purchase. But realistically, at the end of the day, it really is consistent regardless what resort you have. Um, you know, resort timeshare owners just need that support. And primary function of an owner services department is really to be that central location, that one-stop shop that owners can call and very quickly and easily find the answers to their questions. You know, the one thing that I've found interesting over the years is I think I don't think I've ever gotten on an airplane or any place I've gone, I, you know, I tend to like to talk to people, and I find that I run into timeshare owners every turn, and it never fails. I'll hear an owner go, oh, I own this timeshare, and I've been trying to do this, or I haven't used it in X amount of years, and I find myself compelled to find out why and understand and get them back on track, whether they own a Grand Pacific or not. And really, that's what the owner services department at the end of the day is there to make sure that you know, they're nurturing their owners, you know, through that vacation experience. Vacations are something that we just don't get enough of. So, you know, really an owner services department is there to make sure that we make it as easy as possible, to make sure we answer questions, to make sure we're proactive in, you know, from start to finish, from the time an owner makes a reservation, uh, you know, until they have checked out. We want to make sure that any opportunity we have to touch and reach out to that owner that we've done that so that they have the right expectations. There's no bumps in the road. You know, we want it to be a really smooth experience. And that, I think we've been very successful at that. Yeah, so is there any typical staffing of, uh, of an owner services department? Does it vary from your experience? So does that vary widely uh, from resort to resort? Yeah, that's a great question, and it does. Um, you know, really what it comes down to is a couple things. You know, first and foremost, what kind of product is is that service department going to be servicing? You know, for us, we have, I, gosh, I don't remember the number, but I want to say we have something like 20-plus uh, different product types that we service, and what I mean by that is um, you have owners that own fixed unit, fixed week. You have a float unit, float week. You have points. You have... Um, we have rotations. We have um, all sorts of different things, and we have points between, you know, RCI points. We have some owners that own with the Hilton points. We have, you know, you run into, uh, you know, the opportunity to really be able to service all aspects, essentially, of the business. And so your team has to be very well versed on that, based on, you know, what people own. The other thing too is, you know, an owner services staff. You need to be able to take inbound calls, but more importantly, what I find is the outbound side of it is so crucial, and this is where I think a lot of times, you know, a lot of resorts may have 
difficulty in, you know, being able to quantify why they need more people. Being proactive, I think, is probably, you know, one of the biggest areas of opportunity in our industry. And, and I think most properties, most companies have the ability to continue to improve on that. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have, um, one of the things I like to do when I, when I talk with new board members is finding out, you know, do you know how many of your owners, you know, didn't use last year? Are you calling them? Is somebody calling them? You know, and a lot of times the answer is no or we don't know. You know, that's that's essentially, you know, that's kind of a slippery slope. When you have owners, you know, your inbound call center, you'll have a lot of owners calling in, and they're very proactive, and they're trying to, you know, make sure that they're taking their vacations and booking things on time and that sort of thing. You'll have some that are, you know, um, procrastinators, and so you have to have, you know, your service team that can recover and get them back on track when they need to. Uh, but those folks that you don't hear from, those are really your big opportunity because more times than not, you know, they're, you don't know what's going on with them. Are they happy with their ownership? If they're getting ready to come and check in, um, you know, do they, a lot of times with your fixed unit, fixed resorts, you'll have owners that, you know, they get a youth week calendar and it never fails. You're going to have one or two that, you know, looked, well, last year my week fell over this holiday, so they show up and they could show up the wrong week. So we really try to take every opportunity we can to be very proactive in our outbound calls and make sure that we're touching and reaching out to our owners and just seeing where they're at, making sure they've booked a reservation. If they haven't, figuring out why and what can we do to accommodate them. You know, I think one of the big opportunities, too, where, um, you know, as time, the, the owner life cycle has changed. You know, it's going to continue to change as owners go through different ages and different places in their life where, you know, for many years they may have just been, you know, using on site or they may have been exchanging a lot. And then they find themselves in a place where maybe they can't travel as much or they can't travel during different times of the year that they used to. And so a lot of them will tend to say, well, maybe I can't do this anymore. Well, they, they really can. We just have to be there to nurture them along and to show them what they can do. And I think that's, you know, another really big area of opportunity of, you know, nurturing our owners through that life cycle and opening up the experiences that are available to them um, and making sure they know, you know, what's out there. So I think, you know, owner services, to answer your question, I know this is a little bit of a long <laughs> road to get there, but, um, you know, you really have to look at how many calls you're going to get in. Um, are you promoting owner services? What's your delinquency look like? You know, we our staffing stays pretty consistent, you know, when we bring on a new resort based on how many owners that are coming on, we'll add more staffing. We do a lot of education classes out on site, over the phone, um, podcasts, webinars, all sorts of things. So I think the more proactive you can be, um, you know, you can make those adjustments to your staffing as needed, but it definitely will pay for itself in owner retention. And I think that's an important factor to look at. Could you talk about a couple of specific queries that might come in as part of from owners? Should they regard owner services as their first stop when an issue comes up, there's a complaint or there's something good to say? Should owner services be the first stop for them? Yeah, I really believe they should be. You know, some of the things that are going to come through owner services, I think some of the some of the the bigger issues that you're going to get are, you know, I've been trying to exchange and I'm struggling with it or I'm I forgot to make my reservation and and you know, now it's getting towards the end of the year and I called and I can't get my reservation or you know whatever the case. There's always a solution. You know, that's the best part. You know, it's just making sure that you're, you know, you've got somebody well versed and able to take that call, but Essentially, when somebody calls and, and they're struggling with, you know, getting an exchange, a lot of times we can, we can figure out what the challenge is and help them, you know, get through it. Sometimes it's just a lack of knowledge they might have deposited late or, um, you know, in our, for our particular company, we developed a program um, internally many years ago to, you know, kind of supplement the exchange product so that if we have owners that have difficulty using the big, you know, um, exchange companies, we have an uh, alternative for them. The biggest thing I think with owners is they just want to be heard. A lot of times once you can kind of decipher what it is they're trying to do, it's more times than not very easy to fix their challenge and to keep them on track. Uh, and I think, you know, being proactive in your communications consistently and keeping owners abreast of how things work and reminding them, you know, it's time to make your reservation. So uh, those those kind of things will help you know, reduce the amount of calls that you're going to get where people are, you know, really unhappy about something. What support 
uh, does uh, owner services provide to the resorts and to the resort staff? They do a variety of things. We might have an owner services representative on site. Um, I think probably the bigger um, support would be we do a lot of pro, uh, pre-arrival calls and that sort of thing from our owner service department. So we work hand in hand with the resort to make sure that they know, okay, for you know this week's check-ins, here's the folks that are coming in, and here's the time they're arriving. You know, we try to get as much detail as we can so that it's really a very seamless approach when the owner arrives, and we have a little bit of knowledge up front if they may have a special occasion coming up, if they've got a birthday or they've got you know, all sorts of different things. You know, are they going to need, you know, an extra roll away or are they going to need a crib? We try to be proactive and work hand in hand with the resort so that you don't have this bottleneck at the front desk when it comes time to check in. So, you know, we're very well prepared ahead of time. I think that's probably one of the biggest areas. The other area of support is that, um, you know, our owner services department does a lot of education classes and they teach not only the owners, but they also do these classes for the resort staff as well. And that really helps, you know, your up-and-comers, your front desk, and those customer-facing staff to be very well-versed. Um, they may not be able to answer every question, but we want to empower them and educate them so that, you know, they understand. They understand how things work, at least from a high level, and can be there to provide support to the owners, if possible, right there on the spot. And if not, you know, be able to reach out to an owner services representative for help. How do the uh, front desk associates act? Do they act as an extended arm of owner services? Are they independent, or is is everything all integrated within a resort function? Um, You know, I think there's there's quite a level of integration, partially what I talked about a moment ago about just kind of the seamless approach we take with, um, you know, the pre-arrival calls and that sort of thing, so that when that front desk associate you know, gets um, somebody coming to check in. They're very, you know, they're they're up to speed on what that owner is looking for, what they need, um, and we find we get great feedback from our guests because it really does take away a lot of the stress and anxiety, you know, when you're traveling because you've got all these things you're juggling and trying to, you know, accommodate for. So I, I think, yes, they, the associates definitely at the front desk and at the resort are definitely an extended arm of owner services. And we really, honestly, you know, we are... We're so focused on our service culture as a company that I think pretty much anybody in any area that may interact with an owner would feel some element of owner services. I mean, that's we're here. That's why we're all here. We're here to make sure that these owners have a great experience, and our service culture is something that I think is probably one of the most important things in our business. They have uh, owner services, as the name uh, implies, is geared towards the owner. How does uh, owner services or does owner services interact with exchangers and transient renters that may be coming to the property? Yeah, they do, actually. And part of that, again, you know, speaking of the pre-arrival calls that I mentioned, you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest areas of opportunity. Um, You know, the first impression that a guest is going to have a lot of times is going to come as a result of a call from an owner services team member. So, you know, whether they're confirming the arrival or, um, you know, just simply calling to verify, you know, what time they're going to be checking in, how many people they have coming. You know, a lot of times we can uncover some opportunities to provide a better vacation experience just in that initial call out. Um, It might be that we have owners that, or not owners, but renters or um, exchangers that, you know, need some special attention or that kind of thing. And we really get great feedback that a lot of times the service that our owner services team provides these folks is something that they haven't experienced at other resorts. When you're in the hospitality business, you also have to be involved with handling complaints and problems uh, as they arise. So uh, how should uh, escalated calls or complaints be dealt with, you know, through owner services? That's a great question. We have, uh, you know, we have a very strong team, you know, so fortunately for us, uh, most calls are able to be handled by the associate that takes them. But you do have a time or two where something just needs to go to the next level. We have several different er several different layers of support for owner services and whether it's something that happened at the property that needs to be addressed. Um, one thing that I can tell you, and it, it literally goes all the way to the top to Nigel Lobo, our COO, if there is a complaint that is not getting attention or, or needs extra attention, it can very quickly go up the chain if it's necessary to make sure that you know the proper resolution is made. And, and I know one thing that's really important across our organization is that when there is a challenge with any kind of 
guest complaint, whether it's an owner, exchanger, renter, whatever the case, um, timeliness is key. And that's one of the things where, you know, it's basically drop what you're doing and make sure that this is resolved. And we take a great deal of pride in that. So when we look at the legacy resorts that uh, we've been focused on through TBMA and timesharing today, is it common for the smaller legacy resorts to treat uh, owner services uh, as a part-time function, handle handle this, it, what I consider a critical area on a part-time basis? Well, you know, that's, that's a great question. Um, here's the challenge that I've seen happen, and I think honestly, even from the day, back in the days when we were really first building owner services, it's one of those areas that you don't have revenue associated with it. You have only expense, primarily. So revenue comes in and directly to offset it through people paying their maintenance fees on time, the owner satisfaction, that kind of stuff. But it's really hard to quantify. And I know for smaller resorts that are tight on budget, that's one of the things that you know they may look at, well, do we really need this? You know, I think, honestly, you can definitely train your front desk team to really be focused on owner services. The biggest area, though, that I think that part-time may be difficult is if you want to provide a really good quality of service, and that's being proactive, calling out, making sure your owners are booked for their use weeks and that sort of thing. You can do an element of that with a front desk team and maybe somebody part-time, but I don't think, I think you're going to get what you pay for. If you don't put the effort in the in the budget into it, you're going to get mediocre results, and not because those folks don't care. They're very passionate about what they do as well, but they also have many other functions that they're responsible for. So, you know, realistically, I think it's definitely a full-time position, and based on how many owners and the complexity of your property, it really should be focused on as a core element of the success of your resort. Now, is it common for owners to pay their maintenance fees and not use the timeshare at all, let it sit idle? I, you know, as much as I hate to say it, yes, it is very common. And, you know, Shep, I'm sure you too, you know, you, you like I, love talking about timeshare. And I can't tell you how many owners that I've met over time that say, oh, I've owned this thing for 10 years and I've never used it. And um, it's just, it makes me so unhappy to hear that because it's such an amazing product. But yeah, that it is very common. I think we do a pretty good job of trying to prevent that from happening because realistically, you know, most owners, if they're paying and not using it, they're one step away from defaulting. And, you know, for us, we, we want people to get what they paid for. You want to make sure they're using because those people are going to be your ambassadors out there. They're going to be talking about how great their ownership is. And so I think, yes, unfortunately, there are a lot of owners that – you know, procrastinate, or they tried to use it once five years ago, and it was it was complicated, or they had difficulties, so they just procrastinate getting back into it again. And that's again where owner services is so important: is that if you're being proactive before the train's off the tracks, find out why they haven't booked and get them back on track and handhold them through it. You know, realistically, if an owner only owns one week and they use their you know they use their ownership 100 percent of the time, that's only seven nights a year. So at the end of the day, I mean, how often do people really sit and figure out how to do all these things? And, you know, some of the programs have become so complex that, you know, you really have to be engaged in reading and understanding and staying up on all the rules and moving parts. And that's that's tough. So the owner services department is really crucial because for many people, they're not going to take that time. So you want to be proactive and make sure that your owners are taken care of, and that's what's going to result in and retaining your owners and, and, you know, having a high level of owner satisfaction. Yeah, I just want to bring a little clarity to something because we know that there are some really terrific on-site resort managers at the self-managed resorts and they have some very good front desk people. But does a the management company uh, then bring in an additional layer of owner services that could enhance even further the experiences uh, that are provided through through a well-run self-managed resort and a very competent resort manager that they could add on additional benefits. Is that something you can talk about? Yes, absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I have met many resort managers and, and worked with um, some board members from resorts that are self-managed, and they're doing a phenomenal job. The thing is, when you're when you're one independent resort, um, it does become difficult, you know, from a budget standpoint, to provide the level of service that you can when you're sharing a little of the expense across multiple properties. So that's where I think the management companies are able to take that owner service and that 
being proactive and all the bells and whistles that we like to do. I think the reason we're able to do that is because when you're sharing that expense across multiple resorts, you know, it obviously is not going to cost you as much as, as if you were trying to staff that just for one property. So one, one of the things that we've been doing with some of the newer resorts that have joined Grand Pacific is we like to put an owner services person specifically on site. And that person is able to handle exchange, you know, whether it's working through GPX, if they're looking to help somebody, somebody needs help using RCI or II, whatever, you know, company they're using, uh, they can book rentals, resort time, they can book bonus time, they can make their use week reservations. They really can come and really get some one-on-one time with that owner services person, and we found that to be very successful, especially for resorts that when you're when you're an independent resort, self-managed, or even just sometimes under a management company, if you're really operating independently, there's a lot of owners that have that maybe have not gotten the help that they really needed. They're not really pushing to ask for it, and that's where we find having somebody on site. People are more apt to walk up and sit down and say, I'd like to, I've always had these questions or I've had this challenge, and we really uncover a lot of opportunities that we may have otherwise not seen. We've seen consumer awareness uh, working at Timesharing Today where we used to hear from uh, readers at the very beginning how they got ripped off by one scam or another scam. And, and as our consumer awareness took hold, we're hearing people inquiring about a company before they spend the money. And they'll say, XYZ company just contacted me and it, and it seems like it might be a scam. What do you think? Then there are other owners that, you know, they feel that they're looking uh, to get out, obviously, and that's why they're falling victim to these uh, solicitations. And we feel that it's important for the first stop to be is contact owner services. So when there is a potential for somebody falling victim to a scam, uh, are you encouraging your owners to make sure they're contacting the resort first with all these kinds of questions, exit strategies or scams? That should be the first step. Yes, I, I would absolutely agree. And it's unfortunate that this happens. It, it, we uh, try to be as proactive as possible. We'll send out e-blasts and things like that to owners, alerting them of different scams that uh, we uncover or find out about. But, yes, we definitely would want owners to call us first and let us, you know, let us do some checking into it. Chances are, a lot of times, depending what what it is, we'll be aware of it already and be able to help direct that owner. And, you know, you do mention something that's really important, and that's that, you know, understanding one of the things that owner services, I think, is is going to be an important factor going into the future and the evolution of owner services is we really need to get to a place where we're able to better educate the family of your owner. So the owners start to get older and they want to, you know, really get their kids involved. I think one of the challenges has been is it's difficult for them to explain what the benefits are to their kids because they don't, they may travel differently or I think instead of automatically assuming everybody wants out, I think we really, from an owner services standpoint, need to develop those programs to educate the kids because it, those kids are out buying timeshare today. You know, it's it's not that the product isn't right for them. It's that they don't know what's out there available to them. A lot of times kids have just this perception of, oh, my parents' old timeshare. Well, there's so many amazing destinations that these people can travel to and before they have their own families and after that we just have to do a better job educating them and making that you know, education available easily where they can get an understanding if they were to start using the timeshare, how it would work for them. And uh, I think that will help eliminate a lot of these problems that we're having with people just, you know, trying to get out, trying to find a way out. They just don't know how to, you know, talk with their kids about it because most of them went on a, they went on a tour. They went on and had a presentation all laid out for them. And they don't have that same ability with their kids. So we just have to do a better job of, of uh, making that possible. And then for those that the situation is not going to work where they can maintain that timeshare, we have to have the ability for them to deed it back or to exit successfully and make it easy for both the owner and the association. Because the last thing the association needs is to have more expense you know, at the end trying to get that ownership back. So through uh, owner services, you are finding that owners who say, my kids like timesharing but they don't want to own it, that you are able to show them a path to ownership by communicating with owner services? Yes, I, I believe so. And I think one of the things, like I said, is part of it is the kids may think they don't want to own it. They just don't know what it is. They don't really know what how the whole thing works. 
a lot of times when the parents get to the point where they're not using it anymore, either because of age or health issues, you know, a lot of times the kids don't really know what's out there. So they just know, well, the parents have been complaining about it the last year or two because they have to pay for it and they're not using it. And it doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily appealing to them because they just they don't know what's there. I, I find once I start showing people, like I'll have my iPad with me all the time, and I'll let me show let me show you a few resorts you could go to that I know you'd love. And as soon as you show them, they're like, oh my gosh. And I have friends calling me saying, oh gosh, I'd like to go to this place. Do you, do you, you know, can I rent something? It's like, yes, your parents own a timeshare. Why don't you talk to them and use it? And once they once they discover that then it's not a challenge. It's just a matter of getting them over that hurdle to understand what's out there that fits their vacation needs. Well, I think we accomplished a lot in bringing clarity to this whole area of owner services and how important that uh, function is within a given resort. And with all that in mind, uh, this may raise some questions um, you know, among our listeners. If, if uh, any of our listeners would like to get in touch with you, how can they go about doing that? Oh, that would be great. Uh, I would welcome anybody, if you'd like to chat more about this or ask any questions, you can do one of two things. Either call me directly. My direct line is 760-827-4190, or you can email me at sweeks at gpresorts.com. And I would welcome, you know, this discussion. I, If you haven't noticed, I'm very passionate about owner services in our industry, and I love talking about it, so I would welcome any calls. Well, Sherry, thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. You also, Chef. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And this concludes this broadcast of Time Sharing Today Radio. You know, whether you're an owner or an industry professional, your opinions, suggestions, and experiences are all very important to us. So if you'd like to participate in a future broadcast, or if you'd like to suggest a topic for Time Sharing Today Radio, please send an email to staff at tstoday.com. So until next time, happy timeshare.